Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to enable ourselves to understand the what we call the phasor diagram for a circuit that has a voltage, an oscillating voltage supply, and a capacitor. So this is for a capacitive circuit only, no resistors, no inductors. So what we can see here is since we only have a capacitor in there, there's going to be a phase difference between the voltage across the capacitor and the current in the circuit. It turns out for a capacitive circuit, the current will lead the voltage by 90 degrees. A nice little sentence to help us remember that is called Eli the Iceman. L stands for inductor, C stands for capacitor. I stands for current, and E stands for EMF for voltage. And so therefore you can see that in an inductive circuit, the voltage is ahead of the current, so the voltage leads the current. But in a capacitive circuit, the current is ahead of the voltage, so we can say the current leads the voltage. So this is a capacitive circuit, so we know the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees. Now another way of looking at it is to realize that of course the current and the voltage will oscillate according to the voltage supply, which is an oscillating voltage supply. And here's the equation that shows you the voltage as a function of time. It's the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t minus the phase angle. Now, when we go over here and we take a look at the current and voltage as a function of time, you can see that the current will be oscillating, that's the red line, and the voltage will be oscillating, that's the blue line. And you can see here that the current reaches a maximum value before the voltage reaches a maximum value, and the phase difference here is 90 degrees. So there's a 90 degree difference between the current and voltage, or the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Another way to show that is here with the phase diagram. Again, as the current and the voltage oscillate, another way to represent that is to, through the phase diagram, and it's the projection of the voltage and the current as they move around, as they circle around the origin right here. It's a projection onto the x-axis, which represents the voltage and the current at the moment in time. So, let's project the voltage down to the x-axis. And you can see here that this would then be the voltage at that moment in time. So this is voltage as a function of time over here. You can see that it's positive, and that's the magnitude relative to the max maximum voltage of the source. Now, here we can see that if we project the current onto the, uh, the x-axis, we end up with a negative current, so let's do that. So here you can see that is the momentary current, I as a function of time, at that very instant in time when the voltage is positive, like this, the current is negative like this. And let's see what that corresponds to on our diagram right here. So here we can see that if we draw a line like this, we can see that we have a positive voltage right here, V as a function of time, and a negative current right here, I as a function of time, which corresponds to this very moment right here represented by the phase diagram. And you can see, since omega t is going to continue in this direction, you can see that the voltage eventually will have a zero projection onto the x-axis. So as time goes on, you can see voltage goes to zero. As time goes on, voltage will go to zero. And as time goes on, current, which is now a negative value, would go to its maximum value right here. So as current, as the phaser continues to rotate, you can see that the current will become a larger value right here, and therefore we reach a maximum negative value, which is right there. I guess I've moved this line a little bit further to, to the right. To the right, I should have moved maybe a little bit there, but you can get the, the idea here. And so that's why a phaser diagram is really a picture representation, a snapshot representation in that this moment in time, that's exactly what the voltage and the current will be relative to some phase of the, of the oscillations of the current and the voltage. Also keep in mind that the phase angle here is the angle relative to the position of the current where the voltage is right now. You see that the phase angle is drawn in a opposite direction of the motion of the phase diagram, so this would be a negative phase angle which means that the voltage lags the current by 90 degrees, it's 90 degrees behind. So it's another way of looking at it. So let's see here. Uh, to conclude then, if we then look at this equation right here, you can see that the voltage right here, relative to the current, can be said to be Vmax, of course that's Vmax, times the cosine of the angle omega t, but notice omega t already put you over here, and so then you have to subtract from that the phase angle to put you back in phase with the voltage. So that's what this quantity right here means. It's omega t, it's how, how much the phase angle has turned 
uh, through an angle minus the phase difference between the, where the current is at and where voltage is at relative to one another in time. And again, when we have a capacitor, the current leads the voltage. And the reason why is when you have a current flowing towards a capacitor right here, if there's a current, what's going to happen is that charge is going to build up on the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor, as measured by a voltmeter, would be delayed. So what happens is first the current flows at maximum value and there's zero voltage across the capacitor when there's no charge. And as more and more current flows onto the capacitor, the current will slow down, the voltage will build up. So as the current becomes a smaller value, the voltage will become a larger value and so forth. And so that's directly relative to the interaction between the source and the capacitor and the way that the current is ahead of the voltage by 90 degrees. So hopefully that will give you a much better idea of what a phase diagram is, how it represents a, a circuit with a capacitor in it, and how it relates to the usual drawing that we have of voltage and current on an oscillating, oscillating cycle like that. So hopefully that makes sense to you and you understand what a phasor diagram is with a capacitor circuit.